In the scorching heat of 1988, Joshua Adebayo, a seasoned and trained wildlife ranger, faced a formidable adversary within the untamed Oyo National Park, Nigeria. The tranquil wilderness that was once teeming with life and visitors had now fallen into a haunting silence, all thanks to a rogue elephant that had unleashed chaos within its borders. News had spread like wildfire through the park that a rogue elephant was causing unprecedented havoc. Visitors had fled, wildlife had scattered, and the once thriving ecosystem lay in disarray. For Joshua, it was a dire situation, a threat not just to the park's inhabitants, but also to the livelihoods of those who depended on its serene beauty. As the head ranger of Oyo National Park, Joshua knew it was his duty to restore order. He had faced many challenges in his career, but this rogue elephant presented a formidable test of his skills and resolve. With a heavy heart, he set out on a mission to locate and tranquilize the marauding behemoth, safely relocating it to an isolated area. The initial hurdle confronting Joshua was the sheer enormity of Oyo National Park. This expansive wilderness harbored a rich flora and fauna tapestry, stretching as far as the eye could see. Its diverse terrain encompassed dense forests, open savannas, and winding rivers, presenting a daunting challenge for tracking an elusive rogue elephant amid such ecological diversity. Navigating the park's labyrinthine landscapes required equal parts skill and intuition. The ranger's determination was tested as he embarked on a relentless quest to locate the rogue elephant, fraught with unpredictability and uncertainty. The signs of the elephant's rampage were evident everywhere. Broken trees, trampled vegetation, and flattened underbrush marked its destructive path. It was clear that the elephant was in distress, and Joshua knew that approaching it would require skill and a deep understanding of elephant behavior. Hours turned into days as Joshua tirelessly followed the trail of destruction. He relied on his knowledge of the park's geography and the insights he had gained over years of working with elephants. Joshua's encounters with other park inhabitants grew increasingly infrequent during his relentless pursuit. The creatures of the wild, keenly attuned to the chaos wrought by the rogue elephant, had wisely sought refuge deeper within the park's recesses. The looming presence of danger had silenced the once vibrant symphony of bird calls and the distant roars of predators. This eerie silence enveloped Oyo National Park was a stark reminder of the turmoil inflicted by the rogue elephant. The wilderness had fallen under its shadow, leaving Joshua to navigate a realm where even the most resilient inhabitants had sought sanctuary from the menace. Joshua knew that patience was his most potent weapon. He camped in the field, tracking the rogue elephant's movements as it continued to lay waste to the park. The situation was critical, and the park remained in the balance. Finally, after days of relentless pursuit, Joshua received a break in the form of a fresh trail. The rogue elephant had moved closer to the park's northern boundary, a remote region seldom visited by tourists or rangers. This presented an opportunity to get closer to the rogue and execute the plan he had carefully devised. Joshua assembled a small team of trusted colleagues, all experienced rangers. They armed themselves not with weapons, but with the tranquilizing equipment necessary for the rogue elephant's safe immobilization. The team took a cautious approach, moving silently through the dense underbrush. As they drew closer to the rogue elephant, the tension in the air was palpable. They could hear the distant rumble of its movements, the telltale signs of a creature on edge. The closer they got, the more Joshua understood the situation's urgency. Then they saw a massive, messy elephant, its once proud demeanor now marked by distress and anger. It trumpeted loudly, a mournful cry that seemed to echo the torment it had unleashed on the park. Joshua and his team moved slowly, deliberately, as they prepared to tranquilize the rogue. They knew that any sudden movements could provoke a dangerous response. The elephant's eyes, filled with fear and aggression, locked onto them. With a calmness from years of training, Joshua signaled to his team to ready the tranquilizer dart. He took careful aim and, with a silent prayer, released the dart. It struck the rogue elephant, and a moment later the beast began to sway, its massive frame growing unsteady. The tranquilizer took effect, and the rogue elephant slumped to the ground, its mighty form brought down by the power of modern medicine. Joshua watched with relief and sadness as the rogue elephant succumbed to unconsciousness. Now the real challenge began. The team worked quickly and efficiently, securing the elephant for transport. They used a specially designed vehicle to load the sedated giant carefully, ensuring its safety. 
The journey to the isolation area was long and arduous, but Joshua and his team remained vigilant. They monitored the rogue elephant's vital signs, making adjustments to ensure its well-being. The once volatile creature now lay in peaceful slumber, its rampage finally halted. As they reached the isolation area deep within the park, Joshua watched with a sense of accomplishment as the rogue elephant was gently released into its new home. It was a bittersweet moment, for he knew that the rogue elephant's actions had been driven by distress and fear. In the days that followed, the park slowly began to recover. Visitors returned and the wildlife gradually reclaimed their habitats. The haunting silence that had gripped Oyo National Park was replaced by the sounds of life once more. As Joshua looked out over the rejuvenated park, he couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. His determination and expertise had prevailed, and the delicate balance of life in Oyo National Park had been restored. The rogue elephant, now living peacefully in isolation, served as a reminder of the wild's complexities and the responsibility of protecting it. Joshua Adebayo continued his work as a dedicated ranger, knowing that the challenges of the wild would always test his skills and resolve. The year 1988 would forever be etched in his memory as the year he faced a rogue elephant and emerged victorious, a testament to the enduring bond between humans and the untamed beauty of the natural world. Louis Hoffman had known from the tender age of seven that he was destined to be a biologist. His mother, Lisa Hoffman, was a woman with a profound appreciation for the natural world who nurtured his love for animals through stories of the wild and thrilling adventures with animals. As Lewis grew, so did his passion for wildlife. After years of dedication and perseverance, Louis' dream drew nearer. He was a working student while taking up biology at a prestigious university in California, saving every penny to fund his conservation internship in Africa. The anticipation and excitement grew with each passing day. Finally, the day arrived when he boarded a plane bound for Kenya where he would embark on a three-month conservation journey that would change his life forever. Arriving in Africa on a cold September morning in 2001 was surreal. The golden sunlight bathed the savanna, and the air was filled with the promise of adventure. Lewis felt a deep connection to the land, as if he had returned to a place he had never been before. He was about to dive headfirst into a world of exotic animals, African culture, and the breathtaking landscapes he had only seen in his dreams. During his conservation internship, each day was brimming with a distinct sense of purpose and wonder for Louis. His role primarily involved wildlife monitoring and research, immersing him in the rich biodiversity of the rugged terrain. Louis conducted wildlife surveys and gathered essential data to monitor species populations and behaviors. He actively participated in biodiversity assessments and habitat mapping, contributing to a better understanding of the ecosystem. To track wildlife movements effectively, he learned to employ a range of monitoring techniques, including camera traps and radio telemetry. Among the array of awe-inspiring creatures Louis encountered during his time in Kenya, elephants held a particularly special place in his heart. The country, renowned for its high elephant population, resonated deeply with him. The very first sighting of an elephant left him in sheer awe, a colossal lone bull, peacefully indulging in tree branches. Louis and his team dedicated a good half hour to observing this gentle giant. Despite the elephant's intimidating size, its small eyes emitted curiosity rather than malice. The magnificent tusk stood as a testament to its age and wisdom, further captivating Louis. However, as the days passed, Louis couldn't ignore the unsettling change in the elephant's behavior. Bluff charges became a regular occurrence. These massive creatures would trumpet and run toward their vehicle, stopping just before impact. It was a heart-pounding experience, but they were reassured that actual elephant attacks were exceedingly rare. The sound of tusks against hard metal, they were told, usually scared the elephants away. One evening, the team's routine took an unexpected turn. Kathy, their supervisor, decided to take a different route back to camp in search of a black rhinoceros crash. The sun dipped below the horizon as they scoured the landscape, but the massive creatures curiously remained elusive. Disappointed but not defeated, they began the journey back to camp. As their enclosed vehicle picked up speed on a sand track, an elephant suddenly appeared on a bend, taking them all by surprise. The massive creature trumpeted and jogged off, revealing an entire herd ranging from babies to grandparents. The elephant seemed agitated, and Louis's heart raced with unease. 
Then a young male charged through the herd. It held his trunk high, trumpeting madly. Other elephants joined in, their calls growing louder by the second. The young male mock charged their vehicle, stopping only a few meters away. Though they had grown somewhat accustomed to this behavior, the next charge was different. This time it rammed into their vehicle with full force. Chaos erupted inside the vehicle as Louis and his team screamed. The elephant's tusks pierced the windshield, missing Louis's head by mere centimeters. The frenzied elephant stepped back briefly, then rammed into the vehicle again, pushing it at full speed. Kathy desperately tried to reverse, but it was futile. The relentless force of the elephant pushed them about 60 meters before they collided with a massive rock. Their necks snapped forward, the seats punched into their backs. Lewis's neck could feel the whiplash, and his breathing became erratic as he grappled with the realization that they might die in the African wilderness far from home. The elephant showed no signs of relenting, circling their vehicle and rolling it over. Glass shattered, front doors were torn off, and the metal crumpled under the elephant's brute strength. Panic and adrenaline surged through the group as they tried to scour away from the scene and out of the ravaged vehicle. With the vehicle tilted due to the incline, they managed to crawl out and sprint for their lives. Lewis aimed for the nearest tree, his legs shaking with terror. He ended up with the other crew members on the same tree. The group remained up the tree in stunned silence as they watched their vehicle get trampled to shreds by the rampaging elephant. The enraged elephant continued to wreak havoc, crushing and breaking their vehicle. Glass shards and the sound of creaking metal filled the area. The ordeal felt like an eternity, but eventually the elephant, summoned by distant calls from its herd, retreated into the darkness. Once the immediate danger had subsided, they cautiously emerged from their hiding spots, enveloped in a stunned silence. Emotions varied, some wept, others battled physical illness brought on by the shock, but a universal sense of gratitude for survival pervaded them all. Surveying the scene, it was evident that their vehicle lay in ruins, rendering it impossible for further travel. Despite this grim reality, the group pulled together, scavenging what salvageable items they could from the wreckage. Despite having some supplies still viable for consumption, the elephant's rampage had left their communication devices inoperable. Kathy paced around, carefully considering their limited options. They found themselves at a crossroads. Stay put, hoping another safari camp would venture out that afternoon, or brave the perilous journey back to their lodge, an option deemed a cardinal sin in the African bush. With their water supply dwindling and darkness closing in, Kathy faced a tough decision. They opted to begin the journey back on foot. They moved cautiously, mindful not to disturb any other animals they might encounter on the way. Should they come across another elephant, their plan was to climb trees for safety. They had barely been walking for 15 minutes when the distant sound of a rumble reached their ears. It was a vehicle from another nearby camp that appeared, hurtling towards them from around a bend. Tony, the driver of the vehicle, displayed a mix of curiosity and understanding upon hearing their account of the incident. It was clear that such occurrences weren't entirely uncommon in this wild terrain. Their relief upon being rescued by this team was immeasurable, yet the encounter had left an indelible mark on Louis. The elephant's assault on the group resulted in minor physical injuries, bruises and scratches, thanks to the protection their vehicle provided. However, the scars left behind went beyond the physical trauma that would heal with time. Emotionally, they were profoundly scarred and those scars would linger for the rest of their lives. The encounter shattered their perception. The elephants, often seen as docile, could swiftly turn aggressive. They grappled with the realization that in the wild, appearances can be deceiving, and nothing is as it seems in the domain of the untamed. A young girl named Lily lived by courage and youthful curiosity. Despite the profound loss of her parents at a tender age, she remained a beacon of bravery and curiosity. Lily was a genuine history enthusiast, and her passion for exploring different corners of the world knew no bounds. Lily lived in America with her grandfather's family after her parents' tragic passing. However, the dynamic within her new family was far from ideal. Lily's grief-stricken presence often seemed like an unwelcome intrusion into their lives. It was a stark contrast to the warmth she had once known in her own home. One fateful day, Lily embarked on an adventure that would take her far from the confines of her troubled home. She confided in her closest friend about her plans to explore the wonders of South Africa, a place she had only dreamed of. The idea was met with enthusiasm, and together they laid the groundwork for their journey. 
Although Lily's family did not support her, her grandfather, a source of unconditional love, wholeheartedly embraced her desire to explore the world. The plan took shape quickly, and before they knew it, the day of their flight, the 22nd of March, had arrived. With excitement coursing through their veins, Lily and her friend journeyed to the airport, ready to embark on their adventure. The check-in process marked the beginning of their exhilarating journey into the unknown. Their hearts raced with anticipation as their plane touched down in South Africa. The beauty of the land they had only seen in pictures was now before their eyes, and they couldn't wait to explore every corner of it. With their bags packed and their tickets in hand, they set out on a journey filled with new adventures and unforgettable moments. Their days in South Africa were filled with excitement and wonder. They explored bustling cities, trekked through lush jungles, and ventured into picturesque villages, capturing memories with every click of their cameras. It was a journey that enriched their souls and strengthened their friendship. One day, they hired a forest guide to take them on an adventure into the heart of the South African wilderness. The guide arrived, an experienced and knowledgeable local well-versed in the forest's mysteries. Their spirits were high as they embarked on what promised to be an extraordinary day. The forest was a symphony of life, with vibrant flora and fauna painting a breathtaking canvas of nature. The guide led them through winding trails, revealing hidden treasures and sharing captivating stories of the land. The day unfolded in a splendid dance of discovery, and by mid-afternoon they found themselves on the outskirts of a dangerous area within the forest. Suddenly, an enormous elephant appeared before them, as if emerging from the forest's shadows. The guide, aware of the danger, tried to maintain a safe distance. He cautioned Lily and her friend to stay quiet, and not provoke the majestic yet unpredictable creature. But the thrill of capturing this encounter on camera proved irresistible to Lily. Ignoring the guide's warnings, she stepped closer, raising her camera to get a better shot. The elephant, feeling threatened, reacted with instinctual aggression. In a swift and terrifying motion, it reached out with its trunk, seized Lily by the neck, and flung her aside. The consequences of her impulsive act were catastrophic. Lily's lifeless body lay in the distance, a stark and heart-wrenching reminder of the results of not heeding nature's warnings and the experienced guide. The forest, after all, was not a place for recklessness. The guide, crestfallen and filled with grief, had tried to prevent this tragedy, but his pleas had gone unheeded. Upon witnessing the horrific incident, Lily's friend returned to the guide for help. It was a sad return to their camp, where the news of Lily's untimely death shattered their world. The news was unbearable for Lily's family, especially her grandfather, who had profoundly cherished her. The pain of losing such a courageous and adventurous spirit left an irreplaceable void. Her friends were equally devastated, grappling with the sudden loss of a dear companion. The tragic incident made headlines on numerous news channels, serving as a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between human curiosity and the unforgiving forces of nature. Lily's death was a stark lesson in respecting the wild and the wisdom of those who understand its ways. In the heart of the lush greenery that enveloped the local wildlife sanctuary in Kerala, Rajesh Nair had woven his livelihood from the threads of this very forest, collecting honey hidden deep within its depths. Each dawn had seen him embark on a solitary journey into the verdant embrace of the wild. Today was no different. As the sun cast a warm golden glow upon the horizon, Rajesh's feet trod the familiar path into the dense forest. For Rajesh, this forest was more than just trees and wildlife. It was his partner, silently witnessing his life's ups and downs. He had wandered through these woods countless times, each step leaving a mark in his memory. He understood the forest's secrets, its changing moods, and the dangers it held. He knew that threats were hidden beneath the leaves and in the shadows of ancient trees. But he also knew that amidst the uncertainty, the wild honey was a precious reward, worth facing any danger. As he ventured further into the forest on a damp and humid summer of 2001, the thick foliage closed in around him. The sounds of rustling leaves and distant bird calls created a peaceful background melody, highlighting the forest's innate harmony. Rajesh moved with the precision of someone who knew these woods intimately, his senses sharp from years of experience. Each step was purposeful, each breath calculated. Amidst this serene backdrop, a disturbance rippled through the tranquility. The rustling in the bushes grew louder, more pronounced. 
Rajesh's instincts went on high alert. Suddenly a behemoth emerged from the very depths of the forest. A behemoth emerged. A massive elephant, its towering form dwarfing the surrounding foliage, burst forth from the underbrush. The sheer magnitude of the creature was awe-inspiring and terrifying in equal measure. The elephant's eyes, normally gentle and wise, were now clouded with fear and confusion. It had been startled by Rajesh's unexpected presence in its domain and reacted with instinctual aggression. Desperation and panic spurred Rajesh into action. He turned and sprinted towards the nearest tree, the elephant's thunderous footsteps echoing ominously behind him. His fingers clawed at the rough bark as he began to scale the trunk with an agility born of sheer terror. The seconds ticked by like hours as he ascended, his pulse pounding in his ears. But it was too late for Rajesh. The furious giant elephant charged at him incredibly fast, showing off its enormous tusks. It let out a loud trumpeting roar, lowered its head, and rushed at him. The tree shook violently from the impact as the rampaging beast crashed into it, knocking Rajesh off his unstable spot. The world became a blur of chaos and pain as Rajesh was flung through the air, his body a ragdoll, helpless against the overpowering force of nature. He crashed to the ground with a resounding thud. He felt as if he had broken several bones amidst the awkward landing. But the elephant did not relent. As if driven by instinct, it rushed at Rajesh, trampling him repeatedly under its massive feet. The other villagers heard the noise and had been drawn by the commotion. They arrived at the scene just in time to witness the horrifying spectacle. Fear and helplessness gripped them as they saw Rajesh's struggle against the rampaging elephant. As Rajesh lay dazed and battered on the forest floor, the elephant having momentarily subdued its immediate threat, turned its attention towards the gathering crowd. With the elephant still on a rampage, the villagers knew they had to act swiftly to save Rajesh from its relentless wrath. As the crisis unfolded, some villagers hastily armed themselves with whatever they could find, sticks, poles, and rocks, in a desperate attempt to distract the elephant. Others shouted and waved their arms to divert the colossal creature's attention. The elephant, confused and disoriented by the sudden uproar, paused for a moment. Its trunk swung wildly, emitting frustrated trumpets of fear and confusion. It moved in a half circle torn between its instinct to protect itself and the overwhelming clamor of human defiance. In that fleeting moment, Rajesh summoned the last reserves of his strength and crawled bloodied and battered towards the nearest cover. His body screamed in agony with each painful movement, but he refused to surrender and succumb to his injuries. Fueled by a potent blend of fear and determination, the villagers intensified their efforts to keep the elephant's attention away from the injured man. The villagers persisted in creating a barrage of noise and throwing objects, gradually luring the elephant away from Rajesh. The elephant, now unable to withstand the ceaseless assault, emitted a sorrowful trumpet, bluff charged the villagers, and shifted its attention away from Rajesh before plowing through the underbrush and vanishing into the forest depths, its enormous figure fading into the shadows. Once the dust settled and the echoes of the tumultuous encounter subsided, the villagers hurried to Rajesh's side. He was sprawled on the ground, bearing the marks of a brutal beating. His fellow villagers, their faces etched with concern, carefully lifted him from the forest floor. He was alive, but his injuries were severe, with numerous wounds and cuts scattered across his body. However, the most alarming issue was the visible deformity of his bones, some of which protruded unnaturally from where they should have been. It was a miracle that he had survived at all. The villagers carefully and urgently transported Rajesh back to their village, their steps burdened by the gravity of what they had just seen. Upon their arrival, the village's makeshift medical team, comprised of a few individuals with basic knowledge of first aid, immediately set to work tending to Rajesh's wounds. As soon as Rajesh's wounds and injuries were treated with first aid, the village leader radioed for emergency services. The emergency response status and the seclusion of their village made it hard for the rescue team to reach them. After four grueling hours of waiting, the rescue team finally arrived and transported Rajesh to the nearest hospital, where medical professionals treated his injuries. Rajesh's road to recovery would be long and challenging. His body bore the physical scars of the encounter, but the mental scars ran even deeper. The harrowing ordeal served as a stark reminder to the villagers of the dangers that came with living in such close proximity to wildlife. The forest, usually a source of sustenance and livelihood, 
nearly became the site of Rajesh's tragic demise. It showed that even animals that were typically gentle and uninterested in humans could react aggressively when they felt threatened or intruded upon, unleashing the primal wrath of the untamed. Emmanuel Nwosu had spent the better part of his life as a dedicated park ranger in the Yashika National Park, nestled in the eastern boundary of Nigeria. The park, a pristine wilderness of dense forests, sprawling grasslands and meandering rivers, was home to diverse wildlife. Emmanuel had always felt a deep connection to this untamed world, but today he faced a challenge unlike any other. One sweltering afternoon, an emergency call jolted Emmanuel from his routine patrol. News had arrived from a nearby village that an elephant raided crops, plunging the struggling farmers into despair. His duty was clear, resolving this conflict peacefully, safeguarding the villagers' livelihoods, and ensuring the elephant returned unharmed to its natural habitat. Emmanuel quickly gathered his gear and made his way to the village. The air was thick with tension as he arrived. The villagers gathered in hushed conversations, their worried expressions reflecting the gravity of the situation. Emmanuel, known for his expertise in handling elephants, had a reputation to uphold, and today it was put to the test. Near the farmlands, he spotted the source of the villagers' distress. A massive elephant stood amidst the fields, its robust frame contrasting sharply with the modest crops it had been devouring. The elephant's ears were outstretched, indicating agitation and its eyes bore an unmistakable wariness. This was a creature feeling cornered and defensive. Emmanuel knew his most significant tools were his patience and a deep understanding of elephant behavior. With measured steps, he approached the animal, maintaining a respectful distance. He raised his voice in a calming tone, soothing the elephant with his words. The villagers watched in awe as he communicated with the majestic beast, his movements deliberate and unhurried. Despite Emmanuel's earnest efforts, the elephant's fury and unease were unmistakable. Its massive trunk swung restlessly, a pendulum of pent-up aggression, while the earth quivered beneath its stomping feet, sending tremors through the ground. The tension in the air grew denser with each passing second, a palpable force that hung heavy between man and beast. Emmanuel felt the moment's weight pressing upon him, knowing that a misstep could have dire consequences. The standoff demanded a delicate balance of swiftness and wisdom, and he braced himself for the critical decisions ahead. Drawing upon years of experience, he gestured to the elephant, urging it to move away from the crops. Slowly, the elephant complied, taking deliberate steps back from the farmlands. Emmanuel continued to communicate, using his knowledge of elephant psychology to defuse the situation. As the afternoon sun cast long shadows, Emmanuel knew that a peaceful resolution would require more than his calming presence. He called a skilled team of rangers trained in handling such situations. Together, they would orchestrate the relocation of the elephant to a more suitable habitat, far from the temptations of the village's crops. The skilled team arrived, armed not with weapons, but with the tranquilizing equipment needed for a safe relocation. Emmanuel watched as they worked efficiently, ensuring the elephant was sedated without harm. As the mighty creature succumbed to slumber, Emmanuel couldn't help but feel a profound sense of accomplishment. Once plagued by fear and frustration, the villagers watched in awe and gratitude. The experienced rangers worked as a synchronized team with meticulous care and precision, hoisting the tranquilized giant onto a specially designed vehicle. The once agitated beast lay in serene slumber, its massive form juxtaposed against the gentle sway of the car as it began its journey back to the heart of its natural habitat. Emmanuel's watchful eyes stayed fixed on the elephant throughout the journey, his senses attuned to the slightest changes. He was the vigilant guardian, ensuring the creature's safety as they navigated the rugged terrain and winding paths that led to its rightful place in the wild. Upon arrival in the remote wilderness of Yashika National Park, they carefully released the elephant. Emmanuel watched with a sense of fulfillment as the creature once troubled and defensive, awoke in its familiar surroundings. The tranquility of the forest seemed to wash over it, and with a triumphant trumpet it disappeared into the dense foliage. Emmanuel knew this was not just a victory for the villagers or the park, but for the harmony between humans and wildlife. As he made his way back to the village, he couldn't help but smile, knowing that he had once again played a crucial role in preserving the delicate balance of life 
in the untamed wilderness of Yashika National Park. The villagers too greeted him with gratitude and relief. Their crops were safe, their livelihoods preserved, and their faith in the park's guardians reaffirmed. Emmanuel had calmed an angry and disturbed elephant and bridged the gap between human needs and the majesty of the wild. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky with hues of red and gold, Emmanuel Nuosu walked away from the village, his heart full of contentment and the knowledge that his life's work as a park ranger was a calling he would cherish until his last breath. The wild, unforgiving, yet wondrous world of Yashika National Park remained his home and sacred duty. As the sun began to rise over the vast rolling plains of Taraba State, Obina Adekunle, a 48-year-old sheep herder from Kurmi, stood amidst the sea of green, the gentle wind rustling through the grass. His eyes, weathered and wise, scanned the horizon, and he began counting the sheep as they grazed peacefully in the emerging light. This timeless scene had been his life's work, a practice handed down through generations of his family, from father to son, stretching back into the mists of history. Taraba State, situated in the northeastern region of Nigeria, is a treasure trove of natural wonders. It boasted diverse ecosystems, ranging from the savannas and grasslands to the rugged mountains and dense forests. The state was known for its rich biodiversity and was a haven for various species of plants and wildlife. The Benu River coursing through the land brought life and sustenance, carving its way through the picturesque landscape. Obina, a stoic and rugged figure in his well-worn boots and weathered hat, had devoted his entire existence to this place and the noble art of shepherding. His ancestors had roamed these very plains, and he felt a deep connection to the land that was etched into his soul. On a cold October morning in 1973, Obina began his customary routine in the expansive savanna fields. At dawn, he guided his flock to graze on the lush patches of grass, remaining vigilant to protect them from threats. Around 10 a.m., the tranquility shattered as massive footsteps echoed across the savanna. Obina, familiar with occasional elephant encounters, spotted a massive elephant in the distance. He never actually paid the elephants any attention, aside from the occasional moments where he had to move his flock for them to avoid getting trampled. In the midst of the tranquil savanna, an unprecedented realization dawned upon Obina. Elephants were gentle giants, their true nature a far cry from being perceived as threats. Their colossal size was daunting, yes, but they were known for their docile demeanor, resorting to bluff charges rather than actual aggression when feeling threatened. This newfound perception kindled an intense desire within him to touch and pet these massive creatures. The massive elephant, after a casual saunter, reached the river. Engrossed in the soothing flow of the water, it began drinking and using its trunk to wash its imposing frame. As Obina approached, he marveled at the sheer magnitude of the creature. The proximity accentuated the elephant's colossal size, evoking both awe and a sense of insignificance. Summoning his courage, Obina extended his hand, aiming to touch and pet the elephant, encouraged by the apparent serenity of the moment. With a hesitant tap on the elephant's hind leg, he sought to forge a brief connection. However, in a startling twist, just as Obina was in the act of petting the elephant, the colossal creature, seemingly caught by surprise, recoiled. The tranquility of the moment shattered, replaced by a surge of tension and suspense as the elephant's unexpected reaction left Obina momentarily frozen, grappling with the realization that even the most seemingly gentle creatures could possess an unpredictable nature. As the elephant recoiled from Obina, emitting low growls that reverberated through the air, a palpable sense of threat hung heavy in the atmosphere. The ground beneath them quivered with the force of the creature's movement, emphasizing the sheer power it possessed. The warning was clear. The trumpeting cry echoed like a warning call of danger. Obina, frozen in a grip of panic, sensed the warning in the trumpet. Yet fear rooted him to the spot, rendering him unable to retreat. In the elephant's eyes, a creature of instinct and survival, Obina's presence was mistaken for a challenge, a threat to its safety. The charge came suddenly, an unstoppable force hurtling towards him. He wished desperately for it to be a mere bluff, a display of might intended to intimidate. A silent prayer echoed in his mind, hoping the massive creature would halt before collision. But fate had other plans. In mere moments, the once distant elephant was upon him. Time seemed to slow as the reality of the charge unfolded before him. And then it hit. 
As the elephant charged towards Obina, its sheer force sent him hurtling several feet into the air. Suspended in a terrifying moment of weightlessness, he crashed back down to the unforgiving ground with a resounding thud, the impact jarring every fiber of his being. In that instant, he felt as though every bone in his body had shattered, with pain coursing through him like a relentless tide. Suddenly, a heavy weight descended upon his leg, the elephant's colossal form trampling him mercilessly into the ground. The tremendous weight pressed down upon him with an unbearable force, grinding his bones to splinters as it crushed his body. In the throes of agony, Obina instinctively coiled into a protective ball, desperately covering his head in a futile attempt to shield himself from the relentless assault. As the elephant trampled over Obina, a visceral mix of agony and terror overwhelmed him. Every thud of the massive feet felt like a death knell, a rush of pain that seemed to foretell his demise. In those harrowing moments, the grim certainty of death loomed, the crushing weight of the elephant threatening to snuff out his life. Then, unexpectedly, the assault ceased. The elephant's heavy footfalls ceased, and a surreal silence settled over the savanna. Obina, still curled up in a ball, could scarcely believe his reprieve. Fear and confusion gripped him as he remained paralyzed, too battered and wounded to move. In the eerie stillness, he felt the gentle prodding of the elephant's tusk against his bruised body. It was as if the creature was cautiously checking for signs of life, its actions imbued with an almost unsettling curiosity. With a huff, the elephant seemed to convey a sense of finality, signaling the end of the encounter. Minutes dragged on, each one an eternity, as Obina lay motionless. With trembling limbs, he gradually began to assess the extent of the damage, trying to fathom the surreal twist of fate that had spared him from the mighty creature. After the harrowing encounter with the elephant, Obina could do little more than drag himself out of the blistering sun's relentless heat and seek refuge beneath the merciful shade of a nearby tree. His body was battered and broken, his legs disfigured with bones jutting out at grotesque angles, a testament to the brutal force of the elephant's assault. Under the tree, Obina lay in a state of profound pain and exhaustion, the passage of time marked only by the unrelenting sun's slow journey across the sky. Three agonizing hours passed before salvation arrived in the form of his brother, Ovindu. It was customary for them to switch positions during lunchtime, but this day had been far from routine. Ovindu, upon discovering Obina's dire condition, wasted no time. He rushed to the nearby town, urgently seeking assistance from their fellow villagers. With the collective effort of the group, they carefully lifted Obina and began the arduous journey back to town. Obina had suffered multiple fractures and broken bones, a testament to the brutal trampling he had endured. But over the course of three grueling months, he underwent a painstaking recovery process. With determination and the unwavering support of his community, he gradually regained his ability to walk unaided. Emerging from the ordeal, Obina bore not only the physical scars of his encounter with the elephant, but also a profound sense of gratitude for his survival. The near loss of his life had become a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the unpredictable behavior of the untamed. In the annals of South African history, a man by the name of Allen was known far and wide for his unwavering dedication to farming. He lived on the outskirts of a quaint forest village where the lush greenery provided a picturesque backdrop to his life. Allen was a diligent worker and his toil was not for himself alone, but for the betterment of his beloved children. The year was 2000 and one fine morning, Allen arose ready to tackle the day's tasks. He donned his weathered work boots, his trusty straw hat perched atop his head, and ventured into the woods to savor the enchanting sights and sounds of nature. Alan's worries and aspirations for his children's future consumed his thoughts as he strolled through the woods. In solitary reverie, he couldn't help but feel a subtle sense of foreboding, a whisper of danger lurking amidst the tranquility of the forest. Ignoring this instinctive warning, he quickened, eager to reach his fields and commence the day's labor. Midway through the forest, at the heart of its serenity, a colossal creature emerged from the thick foliage, an elephant, the largest he had ever seen. The great beast's eyes locked onto Alan, his presence both mesmerizing and imposing. Panic welled within him, but he knew better than to make sudden movements that might provoke the majestic but unpredictable creature. Desperation clawed at him as he attempted to back away slowly, his eyes never leaving the formidable elephant. But it was too late. 
the elephant's curiosity or perhaps territorial instincts had been piqued. The colossal creature advanced upon the lone farmer with deliberate but thunderous steps. Alan's heart pounded in his chest as he contemplated his difficult situation. In his final moments, Alan's voice echoed through the forest in a heart-wrenching cry for help. A group of villagers toiling nearby, attending to their forest-related tasks, heard the agonizing plea reverberating among the trees. Without hesitation, they abandoned their work, their instinctive reaction driven by camaraderie and the situation's urgency. Armed with their tools and a shared determination to rescue their fellow villager, they raced towards the source of the haunting cry. Panic and worry gripped their hearts as they envisioned the perils awaiting them. But they pressed on, fueled by their deep connection to one another and their unwavering resolve to help. As they approached the scene, their eyes met a grim tableau. Alan, their friend and neighbor, was trapped in a deadly dance with the formidable elephant. They grabbed their makeshift weapons without hesitation, attempting to distract and deter the massive creature. Their unified efforts aimed to divert the elephant's attention from Alan and guide it back into the forest depths. The ensuing struggle was fierce and chaotic. Villagers yelled and waved their tools, creating a cacophony of noise in a desperate bid to disorient the elephant. Sensing the threat, the great beast swung its massive head menacingly, making it clear that it would not relinquish its perceived territory without a fight. Amidst the chaos, one brave villager seized a moment of opportunity and hurled a bundle of firewood towards the elephant, creating a thunderous crash that momentarily startled the creature. It was crucial. Alan seized the chance to break free and scramble to safety. But tragically, as he made his escape, a miscalculation occurred. Alan stumbled, and the elephant's wrathful gaze fixed upon him again in that fateful instant. With blinding speed, the massive beast lunged forward, its mighty trunk reaching out to trap him. The villagers watched in helpless horror as the unthinkable unfolded before their eyes. The elephant's deadly grip was unrelenting, and despite Alan's frantic struggles, he was no match for the overwhelming strength of the creature. A life full of dreams, love, and aspirations was extinguished in the heart-wrenching blink of an eye. The villagers were left in stunned silence, their rescue mission ending in heartbreaking tragedy. Having asserted its dominance, the elephant slowly retreated into the forest, leaving behind the lifeless body of the man it had unintentionally taken. As they grieved the loss of their friend and neighbor, the villagers vowed never to forget Alan's sacrifice. His death was a haunting reminder of the delicate balance between humans and the natural world. It was a reminder that the beauty and majesty of nature could turn treacherous in the blink of an eye, and that in the face of such forces even the most valiant efforts of humanity could be in vain. In the heart of the Kenyan savanna, the relentless sun hung high in the vast blue sky, casting a scorching blanket over the parched land below. The arid plains stretched endlessly, dotted with acacia trees, their gnarled branches providing scant shade to the myriad creatures that called this unforgiving landscape home. Mutisia Makori Wambua, a trophy hunter from Johannesburg, had ventured deep into this wilderness, driven by the desire to add another prized specimen to his collection. The dust devils swirled around his concealed location, a testament to the dry and desolate nature of the savanna. As he scanned the horizon through the scope of his rifle, Muticia's keen eyes fell upon an awe-inspiring sight. A parade of majestic and massive elephants had gathered near the banks of a meandering river. Their colossal frames, bathed in the golden hues of the setting sun, seemed almost surreal against the stark backdrop of the savanna. There amidst this assembly of nature's giants, Muticia counted 14 in total, 10 adult elephants, their wrinkled hides glistening in the oppressive heat, and four playful calves frolicking in the shallows of the river. The atmosphere was serene, a stark contrast to the tension that had enveloped Muticia's hunt. The Kenyan savanna, vast and untamed, was a haven for a diverse array of wildlife. Rolling plains, punctuated by low-lying hills, stretched as far as the eye could see. Wildebeest roamed in herds, zebras dashed across the horizon, and the occasional lion lay in wait, a symbol of predatory prowess. But the true royalty of this domain was the African elephant, a keystone species whose presence defined the savanna's character. For Mutitia, the decision was not to be taken lightly. The suspense hung heavy in the air as Mutitia grappled with his choices. 
The magnificent elephants continued to bathe and drink, unaware of the impending danger. The decision had yet to be made, and as the dust continued to swirl and the sun began its descent, the fate of this extraordinary encounter remained uncertain. In a harrowing turn of events, Muticia finalized his grim decision. He would target one of the defenseless elephant calves, intending to claim it as a macabre trophy from this day's hunt. His rationale rested upon the perceived ease of eliminating the young compared to the daunting challenge posed by the fully grown formidable elephants. Additionally, transporting a smaller carcass would prove more manageable. With a firm resolve, Muticia steadied his breathing, adjusting his aim through the scope of his rifle. The herd of elephants stood a mere hundred feet away, oblivious to the impending danger. Without hesitation, he squeezed the trigger, shattering the serene savanna air with a resounding blast. The echoing gunshot sent shockwaves through the peaceful gathering of elephants, plunging them into disarray and distress. The once tranquil parade erupted into a chaotic flurry of trumpeting and movement. Through the scope, Muticia witnessed the tragic aftermath. A young elephant calf lay sprawled on the ground, blood staining the earth. However, a perplexing and unsettling sight met his gaze. The adult elephants did not scatter nor retreat. Instead, they formed a protective circle around the wounded calf. In a frantic attempt to scare and deter the elephants, Muticia fired another round. The subsequent gunshot echoed through the vast savanna, but it failed to sway the advancing elephants. To his horror, as he peered through the rifle scope, he was met with a bone-chilling sight. The colossal creatures became aware of his position, perhaps driven by a desire to avenge the fallen calf, or fueled by a survival instinct to eliminate the looming threat. They charged toward Muticia with relentless speed. In mere seconds, they closed the distance, sprinting towards him with an undeniable sense of urgency and purpose. Despite their massive size, elephants exhibited astonishing agility and speed as they charged. While unable to maintain high speeds for extended durations, adult African elephants could reach up to 25 to 30 miles per hour in short bursts. Each thunderous step they took propelled them closer, a collective force driven by a combination of fear and maternal instinct. The ground quaked beneath their determined advance, positioning Muticia as an unwitting target in the heart of this primal confrontation. Amidst the looming threat and the deafening cacophony of approaching elephants, Muticia sprinted towards his vehicle, desperate to escape the peril closing in on him. With adrenaline surging through his veins, he propelled himself into the truck, hastily attempting to start the engine. The air was thick with fear and the scent of imminent danger. In the desperate struggle to flee, Muticia underestimated the astounding swiftness of African elephants. Within moments, massive footsteps reverberated nearby and the colossal creatures were upon him. A colossal adult male radiating raw power and primal force charged at the truck with a thunderous crash. The impact was catastrophic. A powerful ram shattered the windows and sent the vehicle toppling over. The window shattered into a thousand shards and the once sturdy truck crumpled and groaned under the tremendous force. Muticia, trapped inside the disintegrating metal, was a helpless witness to this brutal assault. He could not fasten his seatbelt in time, and as the truck was tossed and tumbled, he became a ragdoll, battered against the walls, sustaining wounds from glass shrapnel that tore at his exposed skin. The other elephants, driven by a frenzy of fury and protective instincts, joined the assault. Their trumpets and growls filled the air as they charged, relentless in their rampage. They charged at the overturned truck multiple times. Their formidable might propelled it until it collided with a massive tree. In the aftermath of the chaos, Muticia found his leg trapped and crushed amidst the twisted, mangled metal, searing pain shooting through his body. Meanwhile, a group of cautious Savannah Rangers arrived at the scene. Aware of the danger that still loomed, they kept a wary distance, witnessing the remnants of the elephant's wrath, waiting for the storm to subside before daring to approach the crushed vehicle. After an agonizing 10-15 minutes, the elephant's fury abated and they retreated, leaving behind a scene of devastation, a crushed and mangled truck, shattered glass and twisted metal. In this grim aftermath, the rangers cautiously approached the wreckage, discovering Muticia grievously injured and trapped. Muticia was rushed to the hospital, bearing the scars of the harrowing encounter. He spent weeks undergoing extensive treatment and rehabilitation, emerging grateful for having survived despite the loss of his leg. However, his survival came at a cost. 
The grim reality of the consequences awaited him. Charged with killing a wildlife species, Maticia faced the stern hand of the law, leading to his eventual incarceration after weeks of recuperation in the hospital. The harrowing experience had left an enduring mark, serving as a haunting reminder of the dangers concealed within the depths of the African savanna. It stood as a stern warning, emphasizing that despite the outwardly tranquil facade of certain wild animals, a primal and untamed instinct lay hidden within. Chabochi Adewale had devoted 20 years to preserving and protecting Okito National Park, a vast expanse of untamed wilderness in southwestern Nigeria. His reputation as a seasoned park ranger was well earned, his knowledge of the park's wildlife and terrain second to none. On a hot June day in 2004, Chabochi took a rare respite, napping in his modest cabin. Little did he know that the tranquility of the afternoon would soon give way to one of his career's most challenging and heartwarming experiences. The shrill ring of his satellite phone shattered the stillness of the cabin. Rubbing sleep from his eyes, Chabochi answered the call, his senses sharpening as he listened to the voice on the other end. There was urgency in the caller's words, a distressed elephant calf stuck in a treacherous muddy swamp deep within the remote reaches of the park. To make matters worse, the mother elephant, driven by a protective instinct, had turned aggressively territorial, barring anyone from approaching her stranded baby elephant. The park authorities, aware of Jabochi's seasoned expertise, knew that this crisis required his unique skills. With unwavering determination, Chabochi embraced the mission's gravity, ready to face the daunting task ahead. Recognizing the situation's complexity, he handpicked a small team of trusted colleagues, each sharing his unwavering dedication to preserving wildlife. Together, they formed a formidable unit, united by their commitment to restoring harmony within the park's boundaries. With Chabochi at the helm, they embarked on a journey that would test their mettle and their profound respect for the delicate balance of nature. As they embarked on the challenging journey to reach the stranded elephant calf, the oppressive heat of the Nigerian summer bore down on them. Thick foliage teeming with life surrounded them, and the distant calls of unseen birds echoed through the forest. Chabochi knew they were headed into a realm where the rules of the wild dictated their every move. Arriving at the scene, the team was met with an awe-inspiring and intimidating sight. The mother elephant, a massive and majestic creature, stood guard over her struggling calf, her ears flared and her eyes ablaze with fierce determination. Her deep, rumbling trumpets filled the air, warning all who dared to approach. Chabochi's heartbeat quickened, but he knew that hesitation could be fatal. He cautiously approached the situation by drawing upon his years studying elephant behavior. He raised his hands in a gesture meant to convey peace and respect, his movements slow and deliberate. The mother elephant regarded him with a mixture of suspicion and defiance. The standoff continued. The tension between the ranger and the mother elephant was palpable. Chabochi's years of experience told him he had to earn her trust, not force her to yield. He observed her body language with unwavering patience, looking for signs of a possible opening. Finally, after an eternity, the mother elephant's demeanor changed. Her ears, once flared wide in a threatening display, gradually relaxed. She lowered her massive head, her eyes meeting Chabochi's with a newfound curiosity and perhaps a hint of resignation. Witnessing the mother elephant's subtle change in demeanor, Chabochi recognized the pivotal moment. He advanced toward the stranded calf with measured steps, his senses attuned to the situation's dynamics. The young elephant's plight was dire, sunk deep in mud up to its belly, its desperate struggles having only deepened its predicament. Chabochi's seasoned eyes quickly assessed the challenge at hand. The situation was critical, and time was of the essence as he pondered the delicate rescue operation ahead. With the skill from years of working with these magnificent creatures, Chabochi signaled to his team. Together they employed ropes and harnesses to delicately extricate the calf from the muck. The young elephant's trumpeting cries of distress filled the air as it was hoisted to firmer ground. Once freed, the calf wobbled on unsteady legs, exhausted and shaken but alive. Chabochi watched with relief and satisfaction as the calf was reunited with its mother. The mother elephant, no longer a fierce guardian, approached her calf with a gentleness that contrasted starkly with her previous demeanor. She extended her trunk, caressing the calf in pure maternal love. Then the mother elephant turned to him in a moment that would forever be etched in Chabochi's memory. 
Once filled with defiance, her eyes held a deep gratitude that transcended words. She extended her trunk towards him as if to offer her thanks. Chibochi, overwhelmed by the profound connection he had forged with this magnificent creature, reached out and touched her trunk, a gesture of mutual respect and understanding. As the sun began its descent on that hot June day, the team made their way back to civilization. Chibochi knew that this challenging and heartwarming rescue mission was a testament to the delicate balance between humans and wildlife, a balance he had dedicated his life to preserving. The memory of the mother elephant's gratitude stayed with him long after the incident. It served as a reminder of the enduring bond that could exist between humans and the awe-inspiring creatures of the wild, and of the vital role he played as a guardian of Okito National Park. In the face of adversity, Chibochi Adewale saved a life and strengthened the unbreakable connection between humans and the untamed beauty of the natural world. The air was humid on the cold morning of January 2005, in the heart of the Congo Basin. On this fateful morning, two individuals set forth on a mission that would test their mettle. Edward Layfield, a seasoned forest supervisor, joined forces with Ricardo, a young and promising Congolese engineer. Together, they embarked on a critical assignment, overseeing logging inventory teams and honing the intricate plans required for responsible logging practices. Their journey unfolded beneath the canopy of the dense forest, its secrets and wonders illuminated by the gentle embrace of the emerging morning light. As the sun's first rays penetrated the towering trees, an aura of eager anticipation hung heavy in the air. The forest itself seemed to come alive, responding to the day's awakening. Birds filled the atmosphere with their melodious songs, leaves rustled in harmonious whispers, and distant calls echoed from unseen creatures shrouded in the mysteries of the lush wilderness. With each step they took, the team delved deeper into this untamed realm. Their senses became finely attuned to the symphony of nature that enveloped them. The earth beneath their feet resonated with the pulse of life, and the verdant surroundings rich in beauty and biodiversity kept them spellbound. In this enchanting yet perilous environment, Edward and Ricardo pressed forward. Ricardo, who possessed an intimate familiarity with the local terrain, soon caught wind of a distinctive scent permeating the air, a telltale aroma of fermentation that hinted at the presence of ripe wild mangoes. Following his nose, he successfully pinpointed the source of this fragrance, the African mango tree, whose fallen mangoes now lay in a state of decomposition upon the forest floor. They recognized that this process of fermentation was a natural invitation, beckoning elephants to the vicinity. As the team continued their journey along an aged skidding track, a moment of eerie stillness seemed to envelop the jungle. It was as if the very forest held its breath in anticipation, and then in a sudden and jolting reveal, a colossal figure emerged from the thick undergrowth, unveiling an elephant concealed amid the foliage. Panic surged through their veins and it dawned on them that they were now face to face with an imposing and wholly unexpected creature of the forest. As fear gripped the air, an electric surge of adrenaline propelled them into flight mode. The elephant, its irritation unmistakable, exhibited erratic behavior, digging its front limbs into the earth as if preparing to charge. A piercing trumpet erupted from the massive creature, a declaration of unbridled aggression. In that moment of dread, the two men clung to the hope that this might be a mere show of force, a series of feigned bluffs. Their optimism, however, was short-lived. With startling speed, the elephant transitioned from posturing to action, charging toward them. Panic washed over them like a tidal wave, and the two men broke into a desperate sprint, with Ricardo taking the lead. The colossal creature pursued them relentlessly, its sheer power and determination evident in each earth-shaking step. Edward, propelled by sheer terror, raced through the forest, his heart pounding like a drum, his lungs gasping for precious air. Desperation drove him to seek refuge behind the shelter of a massive tree trunk, as if hoping to disappear from the elephant's sight. But fortune, it seemed, had turned its back on him. The elephant, driven by an uncanny instinct, discovered his hiding place. Fueled by an unwavering determination, Edward sprinted once more, darting through the maze of trees, attempting to confound the elephant and put distance between himself and the raging beast. The ground quaked beneath the elephant's immense weight as it charged relentlessly towards Edward, who was still struggling to escape. 
In a nightmarish moment, the elephant made a lunging move, aiming to trample Edward and potentially impale him with its tusks. Fortunately, Edward's backpack absorbed the initial impact, sparing him from the lethal tusk and certain demise. Although his backpack had shielded him from a direct puncture, Edward could still feel the pressure of the elephant's tusk against his back, the force bruising his flesh. Lying on the ground, the elephant persisted in its attempts to pierce him, but its efforts were in vain. The weight of the elephant pressed down on Edward, causing his limbs to crack under the immense pressure. The agonizing sound of breaking bones filled the air, but Edward suppressed his screams, only managing pained whimpers. Eventually, the elephant seemed to lose interest in its now motionless prey. With echoing rumbles, Edward heard the elephant retreat from the area, summoning the very last reserves of his strength. Edward embarked on a desperate crawl to distance himself from the rampaging elephant, his body battered and his mind grappling with shock. The forest, once a realm of wonder, now loomed as a hostile entity, unyielding in its relentless test of their mettle and will to survive. Undeterred by his injuries, Edward pressed onward, fixating his thoughts on one objective, reaching the safety of their camp to tend to his wounds. Every painful inch seemed like an eternity, but the prospect of receiving medical care and survival spurred him forward. Upon finally reaching the refuge of their vehicle, Edward was met by his anxiously awaiting colleagues and Ricardo. A palpable mix of panic and relief hung in the air. Urgently, he was evacuated first to Kinshasa, and later to the United States, where the full extent of his injuries came to light. An ominous reminder of the perilous encounter, a fractured rib and a pneumothorax. Yet in the face of such trauma, Edward's resolve stood unbroken. He made the courageous choice to return to the Congo Basin, back to the very forest that had nearly claimed his life. The allure of the jungle and the significance of their mission propelled him to confront his fears head on and continue the vital work they had set out to do. In the contemplative moments that followed, Edward mulled over the potential motivations behind the elephant's aggression. Was it protecting a concealed baby elephant? Or had the abundance of fermented fruit unnerved the colossal creature, clouding its judgment and fueling its hostility? Edward's harrowing journey through the forest had imparted invaluable lessons about survival, deep respect for nature's formidable power, and the delicate equilibrium between humankind and the wild. The experience had left indelible scars, both physical and emotional, but it had also forged a steely determination within him. A determination to safeguard and comprehend the extraordinary wilderness of the Congo and its unparalleled biodiversity, the untamed. In the annals of Indian history, a young lad named Adam lived in the embrace of a loving family. He was not your typical university student, for his heart throbbed with a sincere desire for adventure. The family wholeheartedly supported his quest for the extraordinary, knowing that it was the very essence of his being. Little did they know that one day, Adam's yearning for adventure would take him on a journey that would redefine his life forever. It was a regular day in Adam's life when he sat in the university library engrossed in his studies. His eyes wandered to the computer screen, and there it was, an article about the lush and untamed forests of South Africa. The images and stories of this distant land awakened something within him. Like a whisper in the wind, an idea began to form that he must experience this marvel of nature firsthand. Without hesitation, Adam shared his newfound dream with his girlfriend and friends. To his surprise, they all embraced the idea with excitement and enthusiasm. Plans were set into motion, and they were ready to embark on their adventure in two days. Backpacks were packed, trinkets gathered, and cameras were ready to capture every precious moment of their journey. On the 23rd of February, they boarded their flight, leaving behind India's familiar sights and sounds. The journey was an adventure, but the real magic lay ahead in the South African wilderness. Adam and his girlfriend in particular were inseparable, their love for adventure and nature as the glue that bound their hearts together. Upon arrival in South Africa, they checked into a charming hotel with their rooms overlooking a breathtaking landscape view. Their first evening was celebrated with a delicious dinner, laughter, and the creation of new memories that would be cherished for years to come. The following day, they eagerly hoisted their backpacks onto their shoulders, ready to continue their journey. They embarked on a sturdy Jeep that would take them deep into the heart of the South African forest. 
Their excitement knew no bounds as the vehicle rumbled along the rugged terrain. The vistas that unfolded before their eyes were nothing short of mesmerizing, nature's most beautiful and untouched. Their map led them to a safe picturesque camping spot beside a tranquil river. Tents were pitched, a campfire was kindled, and the sweet music notes filled the air. The group reveled in the sheer pleasure of being surrounded by nature's marvels. They shared stories, laughter, and moments of profound connection. As evening descended, the forest came alive with sounds, each more mysterious and enchanting than the last. The group huddled around the campfire, reveling in the moment's magic. Suddenly, a deep resonant sound shattered the tranquility. It was the unmistakable roar of a colossal elephant. They froze in awe, their hearts pounding with excitement and trepidation. However, as the sound drew closer, it became clear that this elephant was agitated, its trumpets filled with anger. Fear gnawed at their hearts as they realized the danger they were in. Panic set in and they scrambled to their feet, abandoning their music and revelry. The mammoth creature emerged from the dense undergrowth, its enormous form silhouetted against the fading light. The elephant's eyes bore into their souls, its presence a chilling reminder of the wild, untamed world they had ventured into. In a furious bid for survival, they began to run, adrenalinizing through their veins. But the elephant was swift and relentless. It caught up to them in moments, its immense body casting a long shadow over Adam and his friends. It was a heart-stopping moment as they faced the wrath of this majestic yet terrifying beast. The elephant's trunk struck Adam's body suddenly and thunderingly, sending him sprawling to the ground. His friends watched in horror as their fearless companion lay injured and in excruciating pain. Panic turned into desperation as they cried for help. Summoning all their courage, they managed to contact the forest authorities. Their voices trembled as they conveyed their dire situation. Help was on the way, but every moment felt like an eternity. The elephant, however, still needed to be finished. It circled Adam, its eyes filled with fury, and struck him once more. The blow left him motionless this time, and the pain was too overwhelming to bear. His friends could only watch in horror, helpless in the face of such raw primal power. When the forest authorities arrived, they were armed with tranquilizer guns and experienced. With precision and caution, they managed to subdue the enraged elephant. It retreated into the forest depths, leaving devastation and anguish behind it. Adam was rushed to the hospital, his body battered and broken. With the love and support of his family and friends, he fought for his life for a month. The doctors did their best and Adam's strength gradually returned. His girlfriend, who had stood by his side, marveled at his resilience and determination. The incident had changed them both, forging an unbreakable bond and a deeper appreciation for the fragility of life and the wonders of nature. When Adam was finally discharged from the hospital, he returned home to a family that had never been more grateful to see him. Understanding the extraordinary circumstances, the university granted him a leave of absence to recover fully. It was a long road ahead, but Adam knew that his spirit of adventure would never be extinguished. In the bustling country of Zambia, nestled among the urban chaos, there existed a haven of tranquility, the local zoo. Families and tourists flocked to this beloved attraction, seeking refuge from the concrete jungle to witness the wonders of the animal kingdom. And at the heart of it all, a gentle giant named Tembo reigned supreme. Tembo, a massive African elephant, was the undisputed star of the zoo. Known for his playful antics and warm demeanor, he had captured the hearts of countless visitors over the years. His presence was a testament to the awe-inspiring beauty of the natural world. For Mosi Mensa, the dedicated zookeeper who had spent over a decade caring for Tembo, the bond with the magnificent creature ran deep. Mosi's days began and ended in the company of the elephant, and he had come to understand Tembo's moods and behaviors as if they were an unspoken language. On this particular sunny afternoon, as Mosi meticulously cleaned Tembo's spacious enclosure, he sensed a subtle shift in its demeanor. Tembo, usually a picture of serene composure, appeared unsettled. His eyes, typically gentle and knowing, now held a wild and frantic gleam. Mosey paused, a furrow forming on his brow. He had seen Tembo in various states, playful, contemplative, and even a little mischievous. But this was different. The elephant's large frame seemed to tremble with an unease that Mosey had rarely witnessed before. Ignoring his own instincts that something was amiss, Mosey decided to proceed with the cleaning. 
Perhaps it was just a passing phase, he thought, as he sprayed water over one corner of the enclosure. The steady hiss of the hose provided a soothing backdrop to the sunny afternoon. But then it happened, a moment so swift and shocking that Mosey barely had time to register it. Tembo, with a sudden and thunderous charge, bore down upon Mosey. His massive form closed the distance in a heartbeat, his trunk raised in a deafening trumpet of distress. Mosey's heart raced as he scrambled to make sense of the unfolding chaos. Instinctively, he attempted to clamber up the enclosure wall, the cold sweat of fear coursing down his back. But Tembo was too quick, his trunk a blur of movement. With a single, powerful sweep, he knocked Mosey off his feet, sending the hapless zookeeper sprawling to the ground. Mosey tried to get up and run for his life when suddenly Tembo, in his colossal form, charged forward, creating an atmosphere of fear and dread. Mosey's fear grew as he was flung into the air and slammed hard against the cage barrier. The pain was overwhelming, and he felt as though his ribs had cracked from the sheer force of the impact. Breathing became an agony, each gasp feeling like inhaling sharp shards of glass. In a vengeful rage, Tembo charged again, trampling recklessly and leaving destruction in his wake. The ground shook with the force of the eight-ton giant, crushing bones and leaving Mosi acutely aware of the immense weight pressing down on his legs. Mosi's right leg felt the excruciating squeeze of Tembo's wrath, a brutal reminder of his vulnerability in this uncontrollable rage. Despite knowing it was likely futile, Mosi instinctively curled into a protective ball trying to shield his head and body from further harm. In those agonizing moments, Mosi grappled with disbelief and despair. The creature he had cared for so tenderly for a decade had become a source of potential disaster. It was a heartbreaking realization, a betrayal of trust that cut deep into his soul. The commotion had not gone unnoticed. Alerted by the abrupt pandemonium, other zoo staff members rushed to the scene. They knew that swift action was essential to prevent a tragedy of unthinkable proportions. Working together, the zoo staff successfully diverted Tembo's attention for a brief moment, providing a crucial window for the medical team to approach Mosi. He lay on the ground, his body battered and bruised. The impact having contorted his bones into unnatural angles and positions. Each movement sent waves of agony through him, the pain vividly reflecting on his contorted face. The zoo security acted decisively, firing multiple tranquilizer darts in a determined attempt to calm and subdue the rampaging elephant. Concurrently, the medical team sprang into action, wasting no precious seconds. They worked swiftly to stabilize Mosey, ensuring his safety in the midst of the chaos. With care and urgency, they gently loaded him onto a stretcher, their concern evident in their expressions. Rushing him away from the enclosure, they set course for the hospital, where the true extent of his injuries would be thoroughly assessed and treated. The aftermath of the incident cast a long shadow over the zoo. Questions loomed, unspoken and troubling. Why had Tembo, the gentle giant, suddenly turned into a fearsome force of nature? What had triggered this seemingly unprovoked attack? An investigation was launched, led by experts in animal behavior and welfare. It was discovered that the majestic elephant had been plagued by a severe foot infection and painful abscesses. The cause of this torment was a life spent standing for prolonged periods on rough and unyielding surfaces within his enclosure. The pain had taken root in Tembo's core, a silent agony that the elephant had endured without complaint. The news stunned everyone at the zoo. Tembo's suffering had been overlooked for too many days. This highlighted a painful truth. Even with caregivers like Mosi doing their best, captivity could sometimes make it hard to see and meet the basic needs of the animals it aimed to care for and display. As Mosi recuperated in the hospital, he received devastating news regarding the extent of his injuries. The brutal attack had left him paralyzed from the waist down, robbing him of sensation and strength in the lower half of his body. It was a grim reality that he would never regain the ability to walk due to the severe damage to his spinal column. Although he had survived the ordeal, Mosey now faced a life of uncertainty and challenges, grappling with the profound implications of his altered physical state. Simultaneously, Tembo, the elephant involved in the tragic incident, received medical treatment for its injuries. However, due to safety concerns, the decision was made to relocate Tembo to a different zoo. This marked a turning point in Mosi and Tembo's lives, forever altering their paths and separating them. The story stands as a haunting reminder of the perils associated with working closely with wild animals. 
even those perceived as docile. It underscores the critical importance of prioritizing the welfare of animals held in captivity and the necessity of ensuring the safety and security of the dedicated individuals who devote their lives to caring for and working with the untamed. G. Buja Mikongo, a seasoned 45-year-old park ranger in Yori National Park, Nigeria, began his routine patrol one crisp morning. The sun painted the sky with shades of orange, casting a warm glow over the vast wilderness he was tasked to protect. The tall emerald green grass of Yori National Park stretched before him, swaying gently in the breeze as he followed a well-worn path through the park's heart. As Jibuja walked along the trail, he couldn't help but marvel at the beauty of the African savanna. The air was filled with the melodious songs of birds, and the distant roar of a lion constantly reminded him of the untamed world he inhabited. He had spent years learning its secrets and rhythms in this park. But today was different. Rounding a bend in the dense undergrowth, Jibuja's heart skipped a beat as he came face to face with a colossal male elephant. Its wrinkled gray hide glistened beneath the gentle morning sun, each crease telling tales of a life well lived. Towering above him, the elephant's tusks curved menacingly towards the sky a testament to its power and age. Jibuja froze in his tracks, his senses sharpening as adrenaline surged through his veins. His well-honed instincts kicked into high gear, recognizing the potential danger of this unexpected encounter in the heart of the wilderness. The elephant, towering over Jibuja, regarded him with dark, intelligent eyes that betrayed a hint of agitation. Jibuja knew he had to remain calm. His life depended on it. Slowly, he raised his hands placatingly, trying to convey his peaceful intentions. He spoke soothingly to the elephant as if sharing a conversation with an old friend. However, the elephant's demeanor remained tense, its ears flapping in irritation. Suddenly, without warning, it lowered its massive head and charged at Jibuja. Panic surged through him as adrenaline coursed through his veins. With a surge of strength, he turned and sprinted, his heart pounding. Behind him, he heard the thunderous crash of the elephant's feet, drawing closer with each passing second. Jibuja's breath came in ragged gasps as he pushed himself to his limits. He dared to glance over his shoulder and dread washed over him as he saw the colossal beast closing in, gaining ground with each powerful stride. In the distance, a large gnarled tree stood like a sentinel, its branches stretching high into the sky. With desperation and fear as his driving forces, Jibuja made a split-second decision. He changed his course and sprinted towards the tree, praying that he would reach it before the relentless elephant closed the gap. Jibuja's hands grasped the tree's rough bark just in time. With adrenaline-fueled strength, he hoisted himself up into the branches, his heart pounding. Looking down, he saw the elephant skid to a stop, its massive body quivering with frustration and rage. The elephant circled the tree, trumpeting angrily, tusks glinting dangerously in the sunlight. It gave the tree several powerful thuds, testing its strength, but the ancient giant remained steadfast. Jibuja clung to the branches above, his entire body trembling with fear and relief. Hours passed, and the sun moved lazily across the sky. The elephant, unable to reach its perceived adversary, eventually grew weary of the futile chase. With a final thunderous trumpet, it turned and lumbered away, disappearing into the depths of the savanna. Jibuja remained in the safety of the tree, his muscles aching and his body covered in a sheen of sweat. He knew he couldn't descend until he was confident the elephant had moved on. When the distant rumble of the elephant's footsteps faded ultimately, he finally began his descent. Once on the ground, Jibuja continued his patrol, albeit with newfound caution. The events of the day had left an indelible mark on his psyche. He knew the wilderness he loved and protected was breathtakingly beautiful and unforgivingly harsh. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the savanna, Jibuja Mikongo walked on, determined to carry out his duty as a park ranger, with even greater respect for the creatures that called this untamed land home. The encounter with the elephant had been a stark reminder of the thin line that separated life from danger, and he would never forget the day he came face to face with the true king of the wilderness. In 1990, a young and ambitious filmmaker named Lucas embarked on a thrilling adventure that would change his life and leave a mark on the world of wildlife documentaries. At 23 years old, Lucas was brimming with enthusiasm, creativity, 
and a profound love for animals. His passion led him to create short films on animal behavior and history, each shot in a different country. However, Lucas, who hails from China, was about to embark on an adventure that would take him far from his homeland. Lucas had a burning desire to craft something new and extraordinary that would capture the hearts and minds of viewers worldwide. He wanted to explore uncharted territory in wildlife filmmaking and share his vision with his film partner, Amelia. Together, they had dreamt of creating something that would stand out, and Lucas had an idea that he believed could make history. One evening, as they sat in their cozy apartment in Beijing, Lucas excitedly shared his plan with Amelia. He told her they should go to South Africa and film the majestic elephant in their natural habitat. He said that no one has ever captured their true essence and beauty in film, and that in doing so, they can make history. The concept immediately captivated Amelia. They spent hours researching the best places to visit in South Africa, planning their expedition, and gathering the necessary equipment. Their hearts raced with anticipation as they booked their tickets two days before their flight. With their bags packed and their film equipment carefully stowed away, Lucas and Amelia arrived at the airport on the day of their flight. Lucas couldn't contain his excitement as he clutched his camera, ready to embark on their South African adventure. The flight was long but uneventful, and as they touched down in South Africa, Lucas felt a sense of wonder and adventure wash over him. They checked into a cozy hotel room, their home away from home for the next few days. The following day, they rented a sturdy jeep to navigate the rugged terrain of the South African forests. With their camera equipment in tow, they set out on their journey, the warm African sun beating down on them. Lucas couldn't wait to start filming and capturing the beauty of the elephants. They couldn't help but be in awe as they moved further into the forest due to the incredible variety of wildlife there. Lucas and Amelia decided to keep their cameras ready at all times, hoping to capture more than just elephants on film. Their days were filled with adventure and excitement as they explored the forest, capturing footage of various animals, birds, and stunning landscapes. But their main goal was to find the magnificent elephants. One day, as they were navigating a particularly dense part of the forest, they heard a sound that sent shivers down their spines. It was the unmistakable trumpeting of an elephant. Lucas and Amelia exchanged excited glances and followed the sound. As they moved deeper into the forest, they spotted a massive elephant through the trees. It was an awe-inspiring sight, and Lucas couldn't contain his excitement. He began filming, trying to capture the grace and power of the majestic creature. But as they got closer, they realized that this elephant was different. It was enormous and had a presence that was both magnificent and intimidating. It was clear that this was a wild and potentially dangerous animal. Lucas and Amelia continued to film, their hearts pounding with fear and excitement. They were so engrossed in their work that they didn't notice the elephant slowly approaching them. Suddenly, the massive beast charged in their direction. Panic surged through Lucas and Amelia as they dropped their equipment and sprinted in the opposite direction. The elephant was relentless, closing the distance between them with each thundering step. Amelia glanced back and saw the elephant gaining on them. She shouted and told Lucas that they needed to find cover. They veered off the path, desperately searching for a place to hide. But disaster struck just as they thought they might escape the charging elephant. Lucas tripped over a hidden root and fell to the ground, his camera clattering beside him. He struggled to get up, his arm throbbing with pain. Amelia rushed to his side, helping him to his feet, but the elephant was nearly upon them. They had no choice but to run again. Lucas, determined not to lose the precious footage he had captured, grabbed his camera and sprinted alongside Amelia. The elephant's massive trunk swung through the air, striking Lucas's arm with incredible force. He cried out in pain, but his determination to save the footage kept him moving. Amelia pulled him away and they continued their desperate flight. They managed to distance themselves and the elephant, eventually finding refuge behind a thicket of bushes. Gasping for breath, they watched as the frustrated and angry elephant slowly retreated. Amelia examined Lucas's injured arm. It was severely bruised and swollen and they knew they needed medical attention. With heavy hearts, they decided to abandon their equipment and head back to their Jeep. As they retraced their steps through the forest, they couldn't help but feel a sense of loss for the footage they had captured and the opportunity that had slipped through their fingers. However, they also knew they had narrowly escaped a potentially life-threatening encounter with a wild elephant. Back at their Jeep, they radioed for help and received assistance from a park ranger who took them to a nearby medical facility. Lucas's arm was treated, 
and they were relieved to learn it was not broken, just severely bruised. The news of their encounter with the charging elephant spread quickly among their fellow filmmakers and wildlife enthusiasts. While they had lost their equipment and footage, they gained a newfound respect for nature's untamed beauty and power. Lucas and Amelia returned to China with a story to tell, one that served as a reminder of the risks and challenges of capturing the wonders of the natural world on film. Despite the setbacks, their South African adventure became a turning point in their careers, reinforcing their commitment to wildlife filmmaking. Their short video of the elephant's charge garnered widespread attention and sympathy from worldwide viewers. It became a testament to the dedication and bravery of filmmakers like Lucas and Amelia, who were willing to risk it all to share the wonders of the animal kingdom with the rest of the world. Lucas's injured arm healed over time, and he continued to pursue his passion for wildlife filmmaking, capturing breathtaking footage of animals in their natural habitats. The South African elephant encounter remained a cherished memory, a reminder that even in the face of danger, the call of the wild was irresistible to those who sought to capture its beauty on film. The last story for this video takes us to Kruger National Park in Africa, where a safari tour driver named Victor had an unexpected and deadly encounter with an elephant. Victor was a safari tour driver of the Elephant Reserve at Kruger National Park. He's been working for several years and has driven this exact safari vehicle. He loves his job and loved going past close to elephants. One day, Victor was provided with a new safari vehicle by the management. It is an open roof Land Rover that allows him and the visitors to go out and drive past animals in the open air. They then asked him to move around the elephant reserve to test the vehicle. Victor cheerfully did what the management told him and went into the vehicle instantly. He was fascinated and amazed that he could drive around the elephants in the open air with the opportunity to enjoy their presence even more. He started the vehicle and began to operate inside the elephant reserve. While driving, Victor was overwhelmed by the sight of the environment and the elephants around him. The national park has a large concentration of elephants, so every corner of the reserve has an elephant casually existing. As Victor was heading outside the reserve, an elephant suddenly crossed the road in front of it, causing him to hit the brakes immediately. Unfortunately, he bumped into the big elephant's body, causing the mammal to roar angrily. Victor, now panicking, decided to maneuver the vehicle backward and make a U-turn to go for the alternative route to the exit. He saw the elephant actively chasing and charging toward him when he started driving forward. While driving the vehicle, another elephant crossed the road, making Victor frustrated that he decided to honk the horn at the elephant. He looked back only to see the angry elephant ready to charge toward him. He realized that the exit was only a few meters away, so he prayed and jumped off the vehicle to make a run for the exit. Unfortunately, the angry elephant caught up and charged at him, sending Victor a few feet in the air before plummeting to the ground. Feeling his whole body hurt, Victor never missed the chance to make a run for the exit while the elephant was now a few meters away from him. He stood up and decided to run and abandon the vehicle inside the reserve as the authorities were waiting for him at the exit. As he reached it, he collapsed in pain and was taken to the nearby hospital for treatment. At the same time, the authorities decided to neutralize the elephant to prevent further attacks in the future. In the heart of South Africa's renowned Kruger National Park, an incident that sent shockwaves through the region unfolded. It was the year 2005 when the tranquil serenity of the park was shattered, leaving a lasting impact on the lives of those involved. Our story begins with Sarah Nlovu, a 28-year-old field biologist from the vibrant city of Johannesburg. Sarah was no stranger to the wilderness. She had spent years studying the behaviors and habitats of the park's diverse wildlife. Her love for nature and passion for conservation led her to pursue a career that allowed her to explore the untamed beauty of South Africa's national parks. Kruger National Park, stretching over 19,000 square kilometers of pristine wilderness, was renowned for its rich biodiversity and iconic African wildlife. It was home to the famous Big Five and boasted an elephant population of over 13,000 individuals, 
making it one of the most significant elephant habitats on the continent. However, as the park's popularity grew and tourist numbers swelled, so did the challenges of managing this delicate ecosystem. Human-elephant conflicts became increasingly frequent as elephants ventured closer to the park's fringes in search of food and water. On a fateful day in May 2005, Sarah was deep within Kruger National Park, accompanied by a small team of fellow biologists. Their mission was to observe and document the behavior of an elephant matriarch known as Naledi. Naledi's family group had been exhibiting intriguing social dynamics, capturing the attention of researchers eager to unravel the mysteries of elephant society. As the team meticulously observed Naledi and her family from the safety of their research vehicle, they marveled at the majestic creatures. The matriarch's gentle yet commanding presence was a testament to the complexity of elephant communication and social bonds. Little did they know that this peaceful day would take a harrowing turn. A sudden rustling in the dense foliage nearby signaled the arrival of another group of elephants. Among them was a massive bull elephant known for his solitary and unpredictable nature. As Naledi's family group and the solitary bull converged, tensions escalated. Sarah and her team watched in trepidation as the elephants displayed dominance and territorial rivalry. The situation grew increasingly volatile, and the once harmonious scene transformed into a clash of titans. During this escalating confrontation, disaster struck. The solitary bull charged at Naledi's family group with a loud trumpet, sending them into a frenzy. The research vehicle became a helpless witness to the unfolding tragedy amid the chaos. Despite their years of experience, Sarah and her team needed to prepare for the sheer force and aggression displayed by the bull elephant. In a matter of heart-wrenching seconds, the enraged behemoth upended the vehicle, leaving its occupants vulnerable and in mortal peril. The incident sent shockwaves through Kruger National Park, and the repercussions of that fateful encounter would leave an indelible mark on the lives of those who had dedicated themselves to the understanding and protection of Africa's magnificent elephants. As the research vehicle lay in ruins, overturned by the furious bull elephant, chaos reigned in the heart of Kruger National Park. Sarah and Lovu and her fellow biologists were in a dire predicament, their lives hanging in the balance as the colossal creature loomed over them. The bull elephant, driven by a potent mix of territorial aggression and heightened testosterone levels, continued to vent his rage at the mangled vehicle. The once sturdy steel frame had crumpled like paper, exposing the researchers to the wrath of one of nature's most formidable giants. Sarah and her team grappled with shock and fear inside the vehicle, their adrenaline-fueled instincts kicking in. Through the shattered windows, they could hear the agonized cries of the elephants locked in a brutal confrontation just meters away. The pungent scent of dust and crushed vegetation filled the air, adding to the surreal and terrifying atmosphere. Sarah, the team leader, knew that their chances of survival were dwindling with each passing moment. She attempted to establish contact with park authorities, desperately relaying their GPS coordinates and the gravity of the situation. They could only hope that help would arrive in time to prevent a tragedy of unimaginable proportions. Outside, the bull elephant's relentless assault showed no signs of abating. With each powerful thrust of his massive tusks, the remnants of the vehicle were further reduced to scrap metal. The researchers had no choice but to huddle together in the rapidly deteriorating shelter, shielded by whatever remained intact. Meanwhile, the park's rangers had received the distress call and were racing against the clock to reach the scene. They were well aware that tranquilizing an enraged elephant was a challenging endeavor, but the safety of the researchers was paramount. As minutes turned into agonizing hours, the park rangers finally arrived at the scene, armed with tranquilizer darts and a profound sense of urgency. Their arrival marked a crucial turning point in the harrowing ordeal, offering a glimmer of hope to the beleaguered researchers. With great precision and unwavering nerves, the rangers administered tranquilizer darts to the enraged bull elephant, gradually subduing his aggression. The colossal beast began to show signs of sedation, his once fierce temperament waning as the powerful drugs took effect. As the bull elephant's fury subsided, the rangers carefully extricated Sarah and her team from the wreckage of their vehicle. Bruised, shaken, and profoundly grateful for their rescue, they emerged from the ordeal physically scarred but alive. The incident would send shockwaves through Kruger National Park, prompting a re-evaluation of safety protocols for researchers and a deeper understanding of the challenges posed by the park's burgeoning elephant population. It was a stark reminder that the untamed wilderness 
held its perils even in pursuing knowledge and conservation, and that the line between fascination and danger could blur instantly. In the aftermath of the harrowing elephant attack in Kruger National Park, Sarah and Lovu and her fellow researchers found themselves on a path of recovery and reflection. The incident had left them physically scarred and emotionally shaken, but with a renewed determination to continue their vital conservation work. Once safely evacuated from the park, Sarah and her team were rushed to a nearby medical facility. Their injuries, though not life-threatening, required immediate attention. Bruises, lacerations, and the traumatic shock of the attack were etched into their beings, serving as haunting reminders of their close encounter with one of nature's most formidable forces. News of the incident had spread far and wide, capturing the global scientific communities and concerned conservationists' attention. Sarah's family, who had endured an agonizing wait for her safety, embraced her with relief and concern. They understood the risks inherent in her chosen path, but couldn't help but worry for her safety. As Sarah lay in her hospital bed recovering from her injuries, she couldn't escape her profound awe and respect for the elephants that had been her passion and peril. She knew that complex factors, including territorial disputes and the stress of a burgeoning population, had triggered the bull elephant's aggression. The incident prompted a broader conversation within Kruger National Park and the conservation community. Researchers and park authorities recognized the need for enhanced safety measures, more comprehensive training, and a deeper understanding of elephant behavior. The delicate balance between human observation and elephant preservation had been underscored by the events of that fateful day. Sarah's commitment to the cause remained unshaken. She and her fellow researchers were determined to continue their work, armed with a newfound understanding of their challenges. The incident had only fueled their resolve to contribute to the preservation of these magnificent creatures in their natural habitats. Kruger National Park, a wildlife sanctuary and those who studied it, would forever bear the scars of that tumultuous encounter. The incident highlighted the complexities of human-wildlife coexistence, the urgent need for innovative solutions to protect endangered species, and the dedicated individuals striving to safeguard them. Deep within the heart of Uganda's Murchison Falls National Park, a unique blend of wonder and danger awaited those who sought to explore its untamed beauty. It was a place where tourists from around the world ventured in hopes of witnessing Africa's majestic wildlife in their natural habitat. Among these intrepid travelers was James Montgomery, a 37-year-old software engineer from California. James had embarked on this African adventure with his lifelong friend Samantha Patel, a 35-year-old pharmacist, and their shared fascination with the continent's iconic creatures. Their journey had brought them from the bustling streets of Kampala, Uganda's capital, to the vast wilderness of Murchison Falls. Murchison Falls National Park, Uganda's largest and oldest, was a haven for wildlife enthusiasts. Visitors were granted the freedom to explore its sprawling landscapes in their private vehicles, immersing themselves in the grandeur of the African savanna. For James and Samantha, it was a dream come true, a chance to witness nature's most magnificent creations up close. Their rented safari car, a sturdy 4x4, carried them through the park's dusty trails as they marveled at herds of elephants, graceful giraffes, and the elusive big cats that prowled in the distance. It was a journey filled with awe-inspiring moments and the occasional adrenaline rush as they encountered the park's untamed inhabitants. But on one fateful January 25th in 2002, their adventure took an unexpected and tragic turn. James and Samantha decided to pause their game drive as the golden African sun painted the horizon with its warm hues. Nature had called and they pulled over to relieve themselves, following the lead of a few other tourists who had chosen the same spot. James was unaware of the lurking danger hidden amidst the tall grass as he ventured further away from the safari car. It was an African elephant, a massive and formidable creature, silently grazing nearby. The elephant had been in must, a heightened state of aggression triggered by surging testosterone levels during the breeding season. In this state, the ordinarily gentle giant had become a formidable force of nature, its senses attuned to any perceived threat. Without warning, the elephant's demeanor shifted from docile to menacing. With a sudden charge, it closed the distance between itself and James with alarming speed. Panic set in as James realized the gravity of the situation, but the elephant's charge was swift and unstoppable. 
In an instant, tragedy struck, and James Montgomery fell victim to the towering beast's relentless fury. The events unfolded so rapidly that Samantha, still near the safari car, was paralyzed with shock. The elephant had unleashed its wrath on James before he could reach safety. In mere seconds, their African adventure had become a nightmare that would haunt Samantha for the rest of her life. Once a place of wonder and fascination, Murchison Falls National Park was now the backdrop for a tragic incident that would raise questions about the safety of visitors amid Africa's wild treasures. James Montgomery's life had been abruptly and brutally taken by a creature whose majesty and power were a stark reminder of nature's unyielding rule. The sudden and horrifying encounter with the aggressive elephant left Samantha Patel in shock and disbelief. She watched in paralyzing fear as the towering beast's rampage continued, its anger seemingly unquenchable. The safari car, which had once provided them with a sense of safety, was now just a few meters away, yet it might as well have been miles. As the dust settled from the initial charge, the male elephant stood triumphant over the lifeless body of James Montgomery. His massive form cast a long shadow in the fading light of the African day, and his trumpeting calls echoed through the wilderness, signaling his dominance. Samantha, trembling with fear, realized the difficult situation she was in. She knew she had to act fast if she were to have any chance of surviving this deadly encounter. With great trepidation, she made a desperate dash for the safari car, her heart pounding. The elephant, having asserted its dominance over the fallen intruder, seemed momentarily distracted. Samantha reached the car and fumbled with the keys, her trembling hands struggling to find the right one. Panic surged through her veins as she imagined the colossal beast charging her. Finally, the engine roared to life, and Samantha slammed her foot on the gas pedal, desperately maneuvering the car away from the gruesome scene. Her mind raced as she tried to make sense of the horrifying events that had just unfolded. Once a place of serene beauty and wonder, the park had become a nightmarish landscape where danger lurked behind every corner. The traumatic images of the elephant's relentless attack and James's lifeless body haunted Samantha as she drove away from the scene. She needed to find help and inform the authorities about the tragedy. Her heart ached for her dear friend, whose life had been brutally and abruptly extinguished. As she reached the park's main entrance, Samantha was met with the concerned faces of park officials and rangers who had heard the commotion. They quickly realized the gravity of the situation and rushed to offer assistance. Park rangers, armed with tranquilizer guns, set out to locate the rogue elephant, while others tended to Samantha, providing her with the comfort and support she desperately needed. The tragedy sent shockwaves through the park and the local community, raising questions about the safety of tourists who ventured into the wild. Park officials and wildlife authorities investigated the incident, determined to understand why the elephant had become so aggressive and what could be done to prevent such a horrific event from happening again. Still shaken and traumatized by the harrowing ordeal, Samantha cooperated fully with the authorities, recounting the events of that fateful day in excruciating detail. Her account and the evidence gathered by investigators would be crucial in determining the course of action. As night descended upon Murchison Falls National Park, the once tranquil wilderness now bore witness to a grim reality. The tragic encounter between James Montgomery and the aggressive elephant forever altered the lives of those who had experienced it, leaving an indelible scar on the park's pristine landscape. The vast Umoya Wildlife Reserve lay in the heart of the untamed African wilderness, Surrounded by sprawling savannas and dense jungles, the place, with its unparalleled natural beauty and the vast array of majestic creatures, concealed wonders and beauties that wreaked havoc beyond its borders. John and Lovu, a seasoned South African park ranger with his weathered features and eyes gleaming with the wisdom of the wild, had heard the cries of the villagers. The elephants originating from Umoya had embarked on a daring expedition as they ventured out into the surrounding areas wreaking havoc on the crops and leaving behind a devastating path of destruction. Determined to quell the escalating conflict, John, with unwavering resolve, embarked on his mission as the first rays of sunlight painted the sky in vibrant hues. The year 1998 marked a significant period in history where the untamed wilderness reigned supreme over the vast expanse of land. The Land Rover driven by John rumbled down dusty trails skillfully weaving through tall grasses that swayed like golden sentinels in the wind. 
The scent of earth and life permeated the charged air, creating an atmosphere alive with anticipation. In the distance, the calls of birds echoed through the surroundings, their melodic symphony serving as a testament to the grandeur of nature. Approaching the outskirts of the reserve, John beheld a sight that filled him with a mixture of awe and trepidation. The fence, which served as a barrier separating man from nature, was found lying broken and twisted on the ground, resembling a defeated sentinel. Propelled by an inexplicable force, the elephants had clearly breached their sanctuary. John ventured forth with measured steps to inspect the extent of the damage. Crouching down, he carefully studied the snapped wires and torn posts, which stood as a testament to the sheer power possessed by these behemoths. As he found himself lost in thought, a seismic presence suddenly reverberated through the earth, capturing his attention and causing him to snap out of his contemplative state. A colossal elephant emerged from the thicket, its hide weathered countless journeys through the savanna. A matriarch stood before them, her eyes bearing the wisdom of generations. For a brief moment, John and the elephant engaged in a captivating gaze, as if two guardians fiercely protecting their domains. A trumpet of warning shattered the silence. The elephant felt the intrusion as her territory was violated. In an instant, a charge was initiated by her as she became a force of nature propelled by millennia of survival instincts. John's heart raced, his body propelled forward in a sprint towards his Land Rover. Adrenaline surged through his veins, intensifying his every movement. The engine came alive with a thunderous roar, embodying a metallic beast that eagerly responded to the call of its master. The Land Rover surged forward, its powerful engine propelling it with great force and leaving a billowing cloud of dust in its wake. Yet the elephant continued to pursue, displaying an unwavering determination that refused to be swayed by any obstacle in her path. The chase continued to dance on as man and beast engaged in a primal struggle. Just as the hot breath of the elephant brushed against John's back, he swiftly veered, narrowly escaping the wrath of the mighty creature. With their hearts pounding, they found themselves standing at an impasse, where both individuals respected the tenacity displayed by the other. At that moment, they shared a silent understanding as a recognition of the untamed spirit within each of them passed between them. Gathering reinforcements, John returned to the breach in the fence, determined to fix it and ensure the security of the area. Together with their fellow rangers, they labored tirelessly under the scorching sun, diligently repairing the divide that had posed a looming threat of escalating the conflict. He carefully weaved the wires, symbolizing man's resilience in the face of nature's mighty forces. As they secured the last strand, a wave of triumph washed over them. The village beyond the reserve had been secured, ensuring it would remain protected from future incursions. With hands marked by the Earth's embrace, John gazes across the vast expanse, fully aware that this moment represents merely one chapter in the eternal dance between man and the untamed wilderness. The Umoya Wildlife Reserve, with its towering presence, stood tall as a testament to the enduring urge of the untamed. Within its expansive boundaries, a sanctuary emerged where the harmonious coexistence of nature and humanity found their rightful place in the intricate tapestry of life. John and Lovu, the South African park ranger, would forever bear witness to the boundless power and beauty that defined his homeland. His homeland's boundless power and beauty would be forever etched in John and Lovu's memory as he fulfilled his South African park ranger duties. Days transformed into weeks, and the harmonious cadence of life in Umoya resumed its rhythmic flow. The villagers who had once been besieged by fear were now working the land with newfound vigor. They were grateful for the shield that had been forged, as it had provided them with a renewed sense of security and protection. Yet, it was clear to John that the encounter of the elephant held a wonder. The wind shifted, subtly altering the delicate balance of nature. John sensed it as they observed how the animals moved with a heightened awareness, their senses attuned to the subtlest of cues. The whispering of leaves carried by a gentle breeze reached their ears, further confirming their intuition. Even the distant call of predators echoing through the wilderness confirmed their perception. The land teemed with secrets, and he possessed an unwavering determination to unearth them. On one fateful morning, the horizon was adorned with hues of gold and crimson as the sun began to rise. During this picturesque moment, John, filled with a sense of adventure, embarked on an expedition all by himself. Armed with a relentless sense of purpose and an extensive knowledge of the wild, 
He fearlessly ventured deeper into the heart of Umoya than he had ever dared. The anticipation hung heavy in the air as if it were tangible, causing the forest to come alive with a multitude of hidden wonders. With an innate grace, John moved gracefully as his footsteps were guided by his hand. Navigating through tangled underbrush and skirting the edges of ancient watering holes, he felt the heartbeat of the land beneath his boots. As he ventured further into the wilderness, the signs of the elephant's passage became increasingly evident. Massive footprints were imprinted on the earth, as if a colossal force had left its mark upon the land. Broken branches littered the ground, evidence of a powerful presence that had passed through. In the distance, the echo of rumbling could be heard, a reminder of the immense energy that had recently been unleashed. He could feel himself drawing closer to something profound, a revelation that would resonate through the ages. Suddenly, a hushed silence fell over the forest. The very air held its breath as if anticipating something extraordinary. And then, the elephant emerged once more, making her way through the dappled shadows. John felt the weight of knowledge transcending time as her piercing gaze bore into his eyes. In this instance, any charges or threats were absent. The truth that had eluded him for so long became clear at that moment. The elephants were not marauding invaders. They fulfilled their role as guardians of the untamed landscapes. With newfound reverence, John's body inclined in a graceful bow towards the matriarch, showcasing his deep respect for the ancient alliance that had long endured between man and nature. Turning to leave, he carried a truth that would forever shape his destiny. The encounter that John had spread rapidly among other rangers throughout Umoya, intertwining itself seamlessly into the intricate tapestry of what he did. The message of the elephant echoed through the ages, serving as a constant reminder that threads of destiny inexorably bound together the wild and the civilized. The Umoya Wildlife Reserve stood proudly, serving as a sanctuary for various creatures adorned with fur and feathers. It provided a haven for these magnificent beings, and a powerful testament to the steadfast spirit of unity that resonated within its core. The first story tells of tourist couple Felix and Lila Stevens and their near-death experience with an aggressive elephant in a hotel in Zambia. Felix and Lila are animal lovers who love to travel worldwide to experience different cultures, weather, environment, and wildlife. They are always on the go to travel and be in other places. Currently, the couple is staying at a safari lodge in Zambia called the Mfue Lodge. This place is perfect for nature and animal lovers like them as it overlooks the Mfue Lagoon, a popular destination to see animals such as giraffes, antelopes, hippos, crocodiles, and elephants. More so, the place is popular among many tourists as some local elephants sometimes just casually wander through the lobby as they are lured by a wild mango tree across from the lodge. For locals, this is a typical scene, but for tourists, this is a one-of-a-kind experience to see elephants randomly walking beside them. One sunny afternoon, Felix and Lila were talking to the hotel receptionists in the hotel lobby. They asked the receptionists about the place's amenities and how they could get to the Mfue Lagoon to try some exciting activities. One of the receptionists, Charity, mentioned to the two that local elephants might enter and pass through the lobby they were in, which thrilled the couple. Charity reminded the couple that when the elephants are about to pass through, they must not block the way or the elephants will be disturbed and aggressive. The couple agreed, but Felix wanted to record the elephants as close as he could. A few minutes later, all of them heard heavy and loud footsteps approaching the lodge from the outside, and that's when Charity and the other receptionist became alert. The elephants are coming. Make sure you're not blocking their way, Charity told Felix and Lila as their eyes were fixed on the lodge's entrance. Felix tried to grab his camera and take the best footage of the elephants about to pass through. And as the footsteps grew heavier and louder, so came the herd of elephants entering the lodge. Felix suddenly jumped to the middle of the lobby to face the elephants as he lifted his camera to take pictures. Lila, Charity, and the other receptionists were shocked at Felix's action as they shouted at him, but Felix didn't listen. The receptionists couldn't do anything as they knew that the elephants would get aggressive once they saw people block their way. 
In the blink of an eye, a massive elephant from the herd surprisingly began to charge toward Felix, which frightened Lila. Felix wasn't fully aware of the situation as he was busy looking through his camera and thought the elephant was friendly, so Lila decided to jump into his place and pull him away from the middle. However, it was too late. Before Lila could pull Felix away, the aggressive elephant knocked the two of them with its trunk and stomped at them with its two large front feet. Felix and Lila shielded their head with their arms as the elephant continued attacking them and rolling them to the ground. As the other elephants passed by, they also trampled on the couple. The receptionist decided to contact the authorities at the Mfui Lagoon so they could stop and neutralize the elephants. Felix and Lila were screaming in pain as Felix tried to avoid the elephant's tusks. However, their tusks were thick yet sharp, and he could now feel them scratch his skin. A few seconds later, they heard the authorities from the Mfue Lagoon trying to neutralize and get the elephants away. When the elephants were backing off, the receptionist helped the two of them and rushed them to the nearest doctor. Both Felix and Lila received sprains, lacerations, and abrasions that were now being treated as they recovered from the deadly attack. Nestled amidst the undulating hills and boundless grasslands of South Africa, the Makwela Reserve cradled its secrets within the ancient embrace of its soil. In the year 1995, a time when the wild was still whispering its mysteries to those who cared to listen, the user reflected on the enchantment that surrounded them. Thabo was a ranger who was known for his exceptional skills and talents. He possessed a unique ability to excel in various areas. And Kosi, a figure who commanded immense respect within the historical records of Makwela, assumed the role of a vigilant protector over the wild and untamed lands. His heart was beating in perfect sync with the rhythmic melodies of the vast savanna as every step he took became an unyielding pledge to safeguard its beauty. Isabella Izzy Duplessis, with her determination, stood firmly by his side, serving as a living testament to the remarkable strength that can be achieved through the unbreakable bond of unity when confronted with the formidable trials presented by Mother Nature. Izzy, who possessed quick wit and resourcefulness, had a profound connection with the land that extended as deep as the roots of the ancient baobabs. The elephant herd stood tall and proud, embodying the very essence of the wild. The weight of centuries was bored by her eyes, and the very heart of Makwela held her soul tethered. One night a noticeable change permeated the air. The cool breeze wrapped around Thabo, caressing his skin and carrying the refreshing scent of earth and vibrant life with it. The night symphony serenaded him as a chorus of crickets and distant calls filled the air. This sanctuary belonged to him, and he considered it his sacred duty. Yet the stillness was interrupted by a subtle shift that caused a tremble. The savanna held its breath, its usually vibrant atmosphere filled with the anticipation of creatures preparing for the night's hunt, their rustling sounds echoing through the air. Thabo's senses sharpened and he felt every nerve in his body become attuned to the whispers of the wind. The night he was pulsed with a secret, an enigma that had yet to be unveiled. During the charged silence, the earth resonated with a low rumble, resembling the announcement of a distant thunderstorm making its presence known. Thabo's body froze as his muscles coiled with a sense of readiness. A titanic form emerged from the shadows, commanding the night with its silent presence. The elephant stood tall, her immense presence towering over everyone in her vicinity. Thabo locked eyes with her, his gaze instantly recognizing the profound weight of generations they carried. There was no mistaking the message conveyed by the steady regard of the woman. He had trespassed into a territory where he had no rightful place. Thabo's voice crackled through the radio as he addressed Izzy, informing her that he had encountered the elusive individual they had been searching for. Thabo requested assistance, Izzy, her voice laced with concern, responded promptly. Thabo exercised with caution. The huge elephant exhibited a strong sense of protectiveness towards her herd. Thabo was advised to attempt to back away slowly as he was on his way. Thabo nodded, acknowledging that the elephant possessed wisdom beyond human comprehension and would not be easily fooled by his attempt at a feigned retreat. With deliberate precision, a step back was taken by him, all while maintaining the locked gaze without ever breaking it. The tension hung heavily in the air, 
creating a delicate balance of survival instincts within the individuals present. Thabo's ears picked up the distant sound of Izzy's footsteps, their soft padding reaching him from afar. He felt a surge of relief. Working together, they have the potential to discover a solution that can effectively bridge the vast chasm that exists between the human and elephant species. Thabo's voice resonated with a steady baritone as he assured her they meant no harm. He meant that they were just there to protect this land. Then a pathway formed in the wake of the elephant as she yielded, showcasing a grace that had been honed over millennia. Thabo and Izzy, with a sense of reverence, moved gracefully, their steps carefully measured and executed with utmost deliberation. The eyes of the elephant remained fixed on them, serving as a testament to the intelligence that coursed through the ancient veins of this wise and revered figure, clearing the immediate vicinity. The elephant's massive form transformed into a striking silhouette against the backdrop of the night. She released a resonant rumble that conveyed both a warning and a hesitant acceptance. Thabo was aware that this encounter, which he was experiencing, would forever etch itself in his memory, serving as a witness to the delicate dance of existence that unfolds in the wild. The years flowed like a mighty river, relentlessly etching their indelible marks upon the ever-changing landscape. Thabo's encounter with the elephant wove itself into the intricate tapestry of Makwela's history, leaving an unforgettable mark on the collective memory of the community. The unspoken language connected all beings in the dance of life was spoken of. As the African sun painted the sky with hues of gold and amethyst each evening, a warm embrace was cast upon a world where man and nature, despite their inherent differences, managed to find a fragile harmony. The encounter between Thabo and the elephant continued to shine brightly, serving as a beacon that showcased the indomitable spirit of the wild and the lasting legacy of those who dared to protect it. As the years went by, they left their mark on Thabo's face, etching deeper lines that told the story of his journey. Simultaneously, they bestowed upon Izzy's eyes an ever-growing reservoir of wisdom, each passing day adding another layer to their depths. The elephant, a figure of strength and wisdom, maintained a steadfast vigilance over Makwela, standing as a silent sentinel amidst the ever-changing tides of existence. Every sunset would paint a fresh chapter in their shared narrative, characterized by respect, understanding, and the unbridled beauty that united them all. The encounter with the elephant had transformed into a tale frequently recounted around campfires. The story unfolded as a tale of courage, showcasing the intricate interplay between humanity and nature and highlighting the indomitable spirit of a land that refused to be subdued. The echoes of that fateful night continued to reverberate, serving as a constant reminder that in the intricate dance of life, each step taken and every heartbeat felt represented a solemn pledge to protect and preserve the invaluable legacy of the wild actively, ensuring its survival for countless generations yet to come.